Hey everybody, Pastor Steve here. Today we are beginning our reading in the Old Testament prophet of Jeremiah. So go ahead and open your Bible please to the first chapter of Jeremiah. This is my favorite Old Testament prophet. I love reading Jeremiah. He was a prophet uh, during the reign of uh, Josiah, maybe the tail end of Zephaniah and the beginning of Jeremiah overlapped. Huldah would have been the prophetess during this time that we read about a few days ago in 2 Kings. And we know exactly when Jeremiah became a prophet. It was the year 627 B.C. And we know that because if you'll look at the first two verses, the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, the priest, who were Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, verse 2, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, that's King Josiah, this good godly king who led religious reform we read about in 2 Kings the other day. Um, and, and notice at the end of verse 2, he became a prophet in the 13th year of his reign, of Josiah's reign. So that was 627 B.C. And Jeremiah was still preaching when Babylon destroyed Jerusalem in 587 B.C. And we know from his book, and we'll look at that later, he was preaching after the fall of Babylon and the, 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 the people were carried into exile and only a remnant was left behind. And we know that he was carried against his will to Egypt. And then we don't know how the story ends. In all likelihood, he died uh, in Egypt. But uh, we don't know for a fact, but in all likelihood. Now, in chapter 1, and actually throughout his book, Jeremiah preached um, about the coming destruction of Jerusalem and Judea. And actually, he was in Jerusalem when the Babylonians were laying waste to it. And so he preached through all of, all of that, and, and, and he preached judgment, but he also he also uh, preached hope, and he, he told them how long they would be in exile and, and when they would be, th that they would be returning. He, 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 he preached hard, but he also gave them hope. I just love Jeremiah. And Jeremiah used a lot of uh, images and physical actions to preach. I said a few weeks ago that some of the Old Testament prophets would do things. And those, that doing, that acting, those actions were symbolic messages. And so Jeremiah would do that at times too. Just to give you an example of how he used symbols to preach in chapter 1, verse 13. Chapter 1, verse 13. The word of the Lord came to me a second time saying. So this was the second sermon he ever preached. What do you see, Jeremiah? And I said to God, I see a boiling pot, a pot filled with hot bubbling water, facing away from the north. And then the Lord said to me, out of the north, the evil will break forth on all the inhabitants of the land, talking about Judah and Jerusalem. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdoms of the north, declares the Lord, and they will come and they will set each one his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem and against all its walls round about and against all the cities of Judah, these nations from the north will surround the city of Jerusalem. I will, in verse 16, pronounce my judgments upon them concerning all their wickedness, whereby they have forsaken me and have offered sacrifice to other gods and worship the works of their hands. Wow. So, um... I'm going to judge Israel because of her sins, and I'm going to use the nations of the north. Well, Babylon is the one that conquered Judah and Jerusalem, but Babylon's not north. If you look at a map, if you look at the geography, Babylon is over to the east and south just a little bit, kind of southeast somewhat. But this pot's going to be poured over from the north and all the water is going to drain from the north to the south. And God says, that's the way I'm bringing the nations that will destroy Judah. But Babylon's not north. But between Judah and Babylon is desert. And you had in ancient times what was called the Fertile Crescent. And so the armies of Babylon and Persia would march north 
on the east side of that desert and cross over through Syria and Damascus, and then they would turn down south toward Jerusalem. They came from the north. And it was like hot water being poured out as the devastation was massive. And we'll see that in later chapters. Now, that's the context for Jeremiah. So I wanted to help you understand that and how he preaches. But what speaks to me personally, among many things in this chapter, it's one of my favorite chapters actually, is um, God's, God, God's call on the life of Jeremiah to ministry, to be a prophet. I, I just, um, I connect with Jeremiah on so uh, many levels. He, I was a teenager when I was called, and Jeremiah was, we don't know if he was a teenager or a young adult, but, but he, was, he was young. And so I can relate to it on a personal level. Look at what he says about his call in verses 4 through 7. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah 1, 4, now 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. And then Jeremiah said in verse 6, Alas, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak because... I am a youth, but the Lord, sounds like Moses back in Exodus, doesn't it? But the Lord said to me in verse 7, do not say I am a youth because everywhere I send you, you shall go. And all that I command you, you shall speak. I've said this before, some of you know this, but many of you don't. I had crippling shyness when I was a kid, and I could tell you so many stories. And I, I don't simply mean I was shy, I mean I was embarrassingly crippling. I, 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 was, I was shy. And God did a miraculous work in my life. And so this always speaks to my heart because it reminds me of what God did for me and what God can do for you because the truth is if God calls you to ministry, if God calls you to service, if God calls you to a task, <laughs> oh, brothers and sisters, God can equip you. Don't ever Put more stock in what you can and can't do than you put in what God can do. He's a great God. And if God calls you, God will enable you. Trust Him. Well, I look forward to being with you tomorrow as we look at Jeremiah chapter 2. Have a good day, everybody.